Hi there, my name is Kenzie. I'm offering you a Hatha yoga practice today here at the Everyday Counts program space. Uh, please remember I'm only here to make suggestions, so you are welcome to move however you need to move. You can press pause, you can skip ahead, uh, whatever you need from your practice today. Please feel free. So let's begin. I'm gonna encourage you to find a comfortable way of being. You might wanna lie down, you might wanna sit upright. Um, it is a really nice way to start the practice by lying down, so that's what I'm going to do. Once you are lying down or sitting comfortably upright, let's see if we can make ourselves even a little more comfortable. So your legs could be long, but sometimes that um, aggravates the low back at the start of the practice. So another way to be could be to bend your knees, take the feet wide, turn the toes in, and rest your knees against each other. That usually lets the low back get nice and quiet. Now from here, arms could be at your sides, or you could rest your hands towards your belly or your ribs. Perhaps closing your eyes. And breathing through your nose if you can. And allowing yourself a few moments to simply arrive here. And letting your body become still. Even noticing that feeling of support beneath you. Allowing your body to rest fully supported. Now let's begin to tune in to our own breath. Starting to notice how your body moves with the breath. But the inhale allows a feeling of expansion. And the exhale, an inward and downward movement. So if your hands are towards your abdomen or lower ribs, with the inhale, you'll feel that movement into the hands. Exhale, the hands moving back down and in. And so essentially here, we're inviting that inhale to be soft and deep. So the rib cage doesn't do much expanding. We're moving it into the abdomen and maybe a little bit of the lower side ribs. And exhale, we feel that reversal of movement downward, inward. And this is a very relaxed breath, so you don't need to take your fullest inhale or even empty yourself completely with the exhale. This is a, a comfortable middle place of simply allowing or inviting the inhale soft and deep. And allowing or inviting the exhale softer and slower. It's a relaxation breath pattern that can serve you in any situation. That soft, deep in breath. And softer, slower out breath. And let's simply pay attention and allow five or six more.
here we are now. If it suits you, maybe bringing one of your hands to your belly and one towards your chest. Feeling the weight and the warmth of your own giving hands. Perhaps offer yourself some sweetness here. A, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation just for you. And now, if it suits you, you could rest the arms down at your sides. There might be a yawn. You might even explore how it feels to stretch the arms overhead. And then rest them there. And we're going to separate the knees, but keep the feet wide at the edges of the mat. So you might even feel the edges of the mat under the soles of your feet. Now we can allow both knees to fall to one side. And then the center and to the other side. And let's keep going with that a few more times, just seeing how kind of easy we can let this be. I know there can be some, some stretch at each end here, but then we'll simply come back to center. Now, so let's meet with our knees back at center. And now we'll allow both knees to fall to the right and we can keep them there. Now notice your left arm, your left side body all the way down to your left knee. We're gonna kind of stretch the knee away from those fingertips on the left side. We're gonna squeeze the left butt a little bit and just let it peel off the mat. So we're gonna feel that slightly deeper stretch. And then slowly release it, and that left buttock is going to roll back onto the mat as the knees roll to center. Allowing both knees to fall to the left. Now we're going to focus on the right side, so we're going to stretch right up through those right fingertips, stretch the right knee away from us, squeeze the right butt, let it peel off the mat. Find that stretch, that squeeze. And then slowly release. Let's try that once more on either side. Just a little bit of a hip. Low back release here. Knees fall to the right. We're stretching long through the left side. Squeeze the left buttock. Let it peel off the mat. And then slowly release it. And this can be the tiniest bit of movement. I exaggerate it so you can see it, but this can be very mellow. Both knees falling to the left, we're going to stretch through the right side, reaching through the right arm, reaching away through that right knee. Squeeze the right butt, let it peel off the mat. And feel it, stretch it, and release. Wonderful. All right, so the knees are back at center. We could walk those feet in towards us. We could lift one, hug that knee to the belly, or lift the other, hug it in. Now let's rock from side to side. And then we might be able to turn this into kind of a circular movement as we circle our knees around towards us, away from us, side to side. And let's change the direction of the circle. Great, so knees come back to center. We're going to roll over to one side and kind of press that top hand into the mat and we can come upright. Ah. Let's make our way towards the back of our mat. Bring our legs out in front and rest into those hands. We can give them a little shake. As we rest a little more into those hands, let's look at our feet. We're going to spread the toes wide and then see if we can just curl the toes like you're making little fists with your toes. And then we're going to spread the toes wide. And again, those little, little toe fists. Let's do that one more time. And we'll 
little toe fist. So now we'll turn it into more pointing and flexing. So we're going to flex the feet, bring the toes closer to us, also spreading them wide. Keep those toes spreading as you press the balls of the feet away from you, and then point the toes. Again, spread the toes wide. Let's slowly flex. Keep spreading those toes as you press them away and point. We'll do that a couple more times. Your feet might have something to say about this. And so we're simply listening to our feet as we start to circle from the ankles. And change the direction. Wonderful. And then slowly Getting that weight off the hands, you can shake out the hands, you can shake out those legs a bit. Um, so it's okay when the legs are extended if there's a little bend here, that's fine. Um, we're gonna start to rock from hip to hip. And again, if it's a bit uncomfortable to be sitting upright like this, bend the knees a bit, lean into the hands. And then we're gonna see if we can get a little forward movement. So I'm kind of moving from butt cheek to butt cheek from sitting bone to sitting bone. And again, you can use your hands here. You could even kind of help Move the legs forward. And it's okay if you're getting no forward momentum. Simply rocking from sitting bone to sitting bone is going to be a nice way to awaken the hips. And if you have made it towards the front of your mat, let's see if we can back it up. Uh, this might be a very curious new movement, and that's okay. I'm going to release any tension in the low back here, perhaps, and get those hips moving. Yeah, so here we are. All the way to the back of the mat. Let's lean into the hands again, and we'll bend our knees again like we did at the start of the practice, only that we're upright this time. Feet are wide, and both knees can fall to one side again. And then to the other. And as we continue to do this, we might be moving forward a little bit. That's okay. In fact, we're going to kind of allow that forward movement as we come towards the middle of our mat. So I'm going to add a twist here. If you've been following along with me in past uh, videos, I'm sure you'll recognize this one. I'm going to walk you through it. So if both knees are falling to the right. We're going to lean into that right hand and then sweep the left arm off the mat and around and behind. So let's find a little extra reach here. And then slowly reach those fingertips away from you as the hand comes back. As the knees come back to center, let's allow the knees to fall to the left. And now we're sweeping the right arm off the mat and around. Reach. And slowly back to center. Let's try this once more on either side. So if the knees are falling to the right, lean into the right hand, sweep the left arm around. And then slowly back. And knees falling to the left, sweeping that right arm around, around. Think about the head and neck turning as well. And back. All right. So from here, let's kind of keep it moving and we'll come to hands and knees, tabletop position. Great, so hands and knees. You might need a blanket under your knees. You might prefer to be on forearms or fists. You could be on the tops of fists here. Just shake out your hands as you need to. Let's begin to rock the hips from side to side. Just notice what your outer hips have to say today. And spread your fingers wide and really root those hands into the mat. It's going to help those shoulders say hello as well. Let's find a bit of a circular movement here. So we're going to rock the hips over to one side. We're going to roll them back past the heels to the other side. We're going to shift the weight forward onto the hands. Let's push the mat away as we do and then keep going. Let's circle two more times in this direction. In any of these movements, you could Close your eyes, you could slow it down. Yeah. 
Let's change the direction of the circle. Lean into it. Notice what you feel. And again, this can be a tiny movement. Listening to your knees. One more circle here. And then kind of circling back to that center place, that tabletop position. We could shake out the hands here. We could adjust again onto forearms or fists. We are gonna move through cat-cow a few times. That's rounding and arching the spine. So I like to establish that neutral spine where I'm gazing down at my mat and locate my tailbone, locate my next inhale. Maybe it's the exhale that helps me tuck my tailbone under and then begin to slowly round. Press the ground away, squeeze the belly. We're gonna turn the tailbone up. That could be an inhale as we begin to gently arch the spine. Can you shrug your shoulder blades together? Let the chest drop down. And let's try that a few more times. Noticing how it feels today. Is there a little stretch to be found at the end range? Is there a little bit of engagement? Couple more. So let's make our way back to neutral. And we're gonna move into a child pose. So if you'd like, you could widen your knees just a little bit as you drop your hips back towards your heels. And it's okay if they're a bit elevated here. Uh, we're gonna walk the arms forward and rest the forehead on the mat. If the forehead's a bit elevated, you could cross your forearms here, stacking them, rest the forehead there. And if there's still quite a bit of elevation, you could even stack your fists, rest your forehead. Let's come back to that relaxation breath pattern, that soft, deep in-breath. And softer, slower out-breath. Couple more. We are going to come back to our tabletop hands and knees position. And I know this can be challenging um, for us over time. So again, adjust whether you're on fists or hands um, and just kind of meet yourself where you're at a little bit here. So I'd like to kind of look at a little bit of core stability here and um, a little bit of a sunbird variation or prep. So it'll be a couple different things we do. And the first thing I'd like to focus on is actually um, a little bit of balance. So we're gonna tuck our toes, if that's comfortable for the toes. Let's lift the right hand just a little bit, and then lift the left knees, but you can take left knee, but you can keep your toes on the mat. And just notice how you're balancing here. And then you're gonna put that hand and knee down. Let's lift the left hand, right knee. And again, toes can stay on the mat or not. Let's go back and forth a few times. Opposite hand, opposite knee lift. And think about the head and neck staying in line with the spine here. So we're not trying to look forward. I know you want to keep an eye on me. But you're looking down at the mat between your hands. And just continuing that opposite hand and knee lift. And if you're feeling like you need a little more challenge, you can untuck those toes and simply lift the whole lower leg, knee to toes off the mat as we do a few more of these. And this is a bit like crawling on the spot. And you're going to feel that core engage quite smartly, quite beautifully as you press down through the opposite hand and knee as you find balance. 
So you'll do that once more, each opposite hand and knee. Probably feeling some heat in the body, some challenge. And then we can widen our knees again. Press back into child pose. And if it helps, you could bend your elbows, you could circle your wrists a few times here. Rock the hips a bit. And then again, let's rest the forehead and let's take three soft, deep breaths. Nice, slow exhales. Great, so we're gonna to return to tabletop. We're gonna do one more variation, strengthening the core, improving our balance, but also in improving our sort of hand and shoulder strength. I know it's challenging to be weight bearing on your hands, but this does um, you know, build strength into the upper body. So let's reach the right leg out behind us and tuck the toes. And just make sure those hands are comfortable. Again, come on to fifth. We're gonna press back through that heel, feel a bit of a hamstring stretch. We're gonna push off the ball of that foot and we're gonna kind of pull ourselves forward. So we're just going forward and back a few times. Yeah, great. I know this is really strong on the hands. A little bit of a wrist exercise. Okay, we're gonna find that neutral place. The toes can remain tucked. So that's the right leg behind, you're on the toes. We're gonna lift the left hand, it might just hover, or you might reach it out in front of you, if that's comfortable. It can be any sort of comfortable hover. And this could be your pose, you're gonna feel the core engage here. Or we could try lifting and lowering the back leg a few times. And keeping well, the low back quite comfortable by drawing the pubic bone towards the navel, by kind of maintaining that long low back. And let's lift and lower that back foot about five more times. Press down through that opposite hand. There might be a little discomfort here. We've got three more lifts. We're thinking about drawing belly button in a little bit, so we're not arching through the low back to lift the leg. We're gonna feel that butt. We're gonna feel the back of the hamstring quite, quite strong. One more lift. And then we'll put the hand down, we'll put the knee down. Let's widen the knees. Let's rest back into child pose. We're gonna bend that left elbow to support the forehead on the forearms. We can circle the right wrist a few times. I'm gonna find that soft, deep breath in. And soft or slower breath out. Wonderful, okay, let's return to our tabletop. We're gonna do it all again on the other side and that will be the end of our weight bearing on our hands. So, now we're reaching the left leg behind. And again, we're gonna push off a few times. Notice how that feels. Press the ground away, even shrug the shoulders away from the ears. We're gonna come to stillness now. So if the left leg is behind, we're lifting the right hand and we're reaching it in front. It might just hover here. It might reach right out in front, feeling as if the upper arm is close to that ear. Pressing down through that opposite hand, that opposite knee. Let's lift and lower the back leg. So if you start to feel this in the low back, if you feel like you're kind of arching to get the leg to lift, don't lift it as high. Think about drawing the belly in and really feeling how the back of your thigh and your buttock here is doing the work. We're gonna lift about five more times, maybe keeping that arm in front, keeping the low back quiet, keeping the belly strong. Three more. Press down through that bottom hand and knee. We're still breathing. I'm gonna lift one more time, maybe hold it for a breath. And then release the hand and the knee. Rather than child pose, let's come to kneeling with hips off of heels. 
and just circle both wrists and take a few breaths here. Yeah, so that was a strong connection to balance and to our deep core strength. Shake out those hands. We got one more bit of movement before we come to standing. And that's going to be a little bit to lengthen the thighs and engage the core, which is a great counter pose to sitting. I like to invite a chance to engage through my lower um, kind of shoulder muscles by imagining I'm holding a big beach ball here. So you can just lift that beach ball up. It's very light. We're going to give it a little imaginary squeeze. Yeah, and maybe you'll feel some engagement here. I'm going to draw the pubic bone towards the navel, kind of drawing the belly in. I'm going to squeeze my butt a little bit with my mind and then take everything back. And as we go back, you're going to start to feel the thighs sort of engaging and lengthening here. It's not a back bend. We are taking our belly with us and then we're coming back up. As usual, I'm exaggerating the movement so you can see it, but you don't need to go far. I'm going to take the ball with you, give it a squeeze, squeeze your butt, find that stretch, and then let's come out of it. You can do that three more times. Squeeze, squeeze everything, draw the belly in, come on back. And with control, coming back up. And again, if you're feeling a lot of this in the low back, can we draw the tailbone down and under? And take the belly back with you. And back up right again. We're going to do that one more time. Squeeze that ball, squeeze your bum, take everything back. And take an extra breath here. And we're back up. Just noticing how that feels, if it helps you to bring hands to the belly. Close your eyes, you can invite that soft, deep breath in, softer, slower breath. Okay, when you're ready, opening your eyes, we are going to make our way to standing. So however you need to get there, sometimes it's nice to have a handy wall or a chair. Go nice and slow, find your way. And as usual, if you do want to bring a chair or extra props in, be close to a wall. That really can support us in feeling, um, just feeling a little safer. Yeah, so whatever you need. Uh, so from here, we'll find a comfortable way of being. So I like to say, um, you know, feel your feet comfortably supporting you. They don't need to be wide or close or any specific way. Just whatever feels supportive for you. Uh, you can always have your arms at the sides, kind of help with balance. Even finding a gaze point in front of you, because we are going to challenge our balance a bit. Let's start by simply shifting the weight back, lifting the toes, lowering the toes. So you're already starting to play with the shifting of the weight, lifting the toes, lowering the toes. A few more. Lift and spread. Lower the toes. You can release that. We're going to do a little bit something different with the feet. We're going to rock onto the outer edges of the feet, lifting the inner edges. Press into the inner edges, lifting the outer edges. And just playing with that. And sometimes the feet have a lot to say about this. Press down through the outer edges. Press down through the inner edges. And notice how your knees shift, your hips shift. But also kind of where you're feeling this in your feet. Couple more in either direction. Great. Okay, you can kind of walk that out, shake that out. And walk the hands down the thighs. This is a really common one that I like to do before we do much in the way of standing. So we're gonna start to, we're bending our knees, our weight, hands are on the thighs, and then we're starting to circle the knees. At the same time, the ankles start to circle, the feet start to shift, so you're kind of shifting the weight all over the feet. Maybe there's a little stretch to the calf and change the direction of that circle. And again, tuning in, what do you feel here? Great, a couple more circles. Okay, so as we come to center, we can come back to standing. 
I'm gonna do a couple more movements up the body just to kind of get the body comfortable with this upright position. So next we might take the feet a little wider again as long as they feel supportive under you. We're gonna bring perhaps the hands to the hips or out to the sides for balance. And now we'll start to circle the hips. So we're gonna rock the hips over to one side, roll them back and around to the other side and forward again. The knees are nice and soft here. It's almost like when we were circling the knees because you're gonna feel the ankles, you're gonna feel the edges of the feet shifting. Yeah. Maybe one more in this direction. Just like when we were on hands and knees circling the hips, we're gonna lean into those hips and notice the stretch. Let's change the direction. Simply notice what you notice. Good old fashioned hip circles. Two more. Great. So now we can find our way to our Tadasan Mountain Pose. Notice how it feels to be here. Feet are comfortably under you. Arms are long at your sides. Sometimes I imagine a helium balloon tugging on the crown of my head. Maybe tiny weights suspended from my fingertips. As you inhale, finding your fullest height. Exhale, the tops of the shoulders soften. And inhale, getting tall. Exhale, soft shoulders. Great. This is our mountain pose. For mountain pose, we're going to move into a few variations to challenge our balance. I'm going to move sideways so you can see me a little better. Um, and so we're going to start in something called chair pose. So the knees track forward over the toes a little bit, but then we send our hips back. And as we do, um, we're going to let the pelvis and torso hinge forward. So I'm not arching, I'm not rounding, I'm in that middle place. It might be nice to keep the arms out to the sides for balance. You might kind of sweep them in front as you sit back a little further. And as I sit back further, I can kind of feel the buttocks engage a little bit. This is chair pose, but we kind of become the chair, so you have that strong seat. Okay, so we're going to push through those feet coming back to standing and let the arms sweep out to your sides. Let's lift both heels. So this can be a little wibbly wobbly, so let's go nice and slow. And then we'll slowly lower down again. We're going to take the knees forward, the hips back. We're going to find that chair pose as the arms sweep in front. Pushing through the feet, let's come back upright. Let's lift both heels. So this is where a gaze point in front of me could help. It's okay if we wibble wobble here. This is a lot of strength we're building into those feet. As we sink back into our chair pose, let's find that strong seat of the chair. We'll do this a few more times. Again, slow with control. Can we lift both heels together? Slow with control, lowering the heels. And two more. to your palm tree, lifted heels. Slowly down. And there's our chair pose. Right. So we are going to take a bit of a rest here and there's a few variations. We could stay in this chair pose, bring the hands to the thighs and kind of rest here. We could bring the forearms to the thighs and rest. And if you had the back of a chair nearby, you could lean your hands on the back or the seat of that chair, or you could reach for the floor. I notice I'm keeping my knees bent as I rest my belly over my thighs and then let my head hang. Of course, high or low blood pressure might dictate that you stay kind of at the top of this movement with the head in line with the heart. I'm going to offer three breaths wherever you need to be in this pose. If the head is hanging and that's comfortable, maybe give your head a gentle shake. Your shoulders a little shrug. Two more breaths here. Soft and deep. Soft and slow. And 
Great. So we're going to come out of this pose the way we came in. We're going to walk our hands back up to our thighs. And we're going to bring those hands to push away from those thighs to bring us upright. And let's offer a few breaths here. On our mountain pose, inhaling to find your fullest height. Exhaling, soft shoulders. One more. Great. So from here, we are going to take a wide-legged stance. Um, I usually dictate sort of uh, about as wide as one of your legs is long. Easy for me to say. I've got short legs, but you can always take those feet closer and at any point you can adjust. Uh, let's begin by focusing on the right foot. So I'm pivoting on the right heel and turning those toes to that end of the mat. And then notice my left foot. I'm just going to scooch the heel back a smidgen so it kind of feels like it's turned out slightly. And from here I could sweep the back arm up so the shoulder's in line with the hand. And then sweep the front arm up. If you'd prefer to have a chair right here, you could. Okay? Or even be leaning against the wall if that makes you feel more comfortable. Now I'm going to look over those right fingertips, if balance permits, as I soften those shoulders and kind of reach out through those fingertips. Okay. Now we're going to try bending the front knee just so it's over the ankle, maybe a little further, while staying upright. It's tempting to want to lean forward, but we're going to see if we can stay nice and upright here. And then straighten the leg again. Bend the knee again. I know for me, my knee kind of wants to turn in slightly. So as I bend and straighten the leg, I think about pointing that kneecap towards the second or third toe, which is easier said than done. I find that challenging. Let's do a couple more here. I know this is strong for the arms. All right, so the next time the knee is bent, let's keep it there. This is our warrior two. Kind of gazing lovingly over those right fingertips, reaching through the fingertips. Let's bring the back hand down to the back thigh. We're gonna turn the right palm up. So we walk the back hand down the thigh. Let's reach that right arm towards the ceiling and find a little bit of a side bend. I think this is our first side bend today. So just take it slow. Oh, you can't see my hand. It's up there. And let's reach up towards that hand. Okay, we're gonna slowly float those arms back to that warrior pose. Yeah. Kind of bend the right elbow and bring the right forearm to the thigh. If that feels too far away, bring the right hand to the thigh. And press down through that forearm as we reach up through that arm. You could even look up towards the arm if that's comfortable for your neck. Pressing down to reach up. Let's press both feet into the mat as we lift the lower forearm off the mat. There's the strength and then come back to our warrior. Yeah, beautiful. And let's release the arms and straighten those legs. We're gonna bring the feet parallel and take a few breaths here. Soft, deep in breath, soft or slower out breath. One more. Okay, let's do it all again on the other side. So locating my left foot, I'm pivoting on that heel, turning the toes to the other wall. I'm gonna scoot the right heel back a smidgen so it kind of feels like it's turned out. Yeah, and let's bring the back arm up, see that it's in line with the shoulders. And then the front arm, now I'm looking over those right fingertips as I soften my shoulders and reach my fingers away from each other. Let's bend the front knee. Remember, we're pointing that kneecap towards second or third toe. Staying nice and upright. And then straightening again. And we'll do that a few more times. Reaching out through those fingers. And of course, if you need it more challenge, you could stay in the pose and hold it. But I like this moving in and out of the pose, kind of finding the strength and coordination to move in and out with control. Let's do one more here and we'll stay. 
Yeah. So we'll locate the back hand. We're going to sweep it down outside of that back thigh. Turn that left palm up skyward and we'll reach it to the ceiling as we walk the back hand down the back thigh. We're still keeping that front knee bent, but there's the option to straighten it. So that's always fine, especially if you're feeling really shaky. You could bend that, you could straighten that front leg. One more breath here as we reach up, just like my invisible hand. And then we'll turn that top hand away as we come back to our warrior. So let's find it for a moment. I know legs might be getting a little tired here, as are the arms, but let's bend that front elbow, bring the forearm to rest on the thigh or the hand, great option. Press down to reach up, maybe look at that hand. Couple breaths here. Press down through both feet so we can hover that bottom arm for a moment. Feel the strength. And then we'll lift up and out of that pose. We're back to our warrior. One more breath here. And now we'll release the arms, release the legs. Let's bring the feet parallel. So we're going to come back into that forward fold, but this time with wide legs. Again, I'll turn sideways just so you see that we don't need to straighten the legs here. Uh, so we can bend the, the knees a little bit. We could rest our hands here. And this could be the place we want to be. We could come onto the forearms, keeping the head in line with the heart. Again, higher low blood pressure. This could be um, the best pose for you. Or you could reach for the floor or the back of a chair and let your head hang. I'm going to keep those knees just a little bit bent as we offer three breaths, soft, deep in breath, soft or slower out breath. And when you're ready, moving nice and slow, we're gonna get those forearms back to our thighs. We get the hands onto our thighs and then slowly push the ground away with your feet as you come back upright. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna to turn to face forward again. We're gonna do one more set of standing poses. I know this has been a fairly strength-based practice, um, so please honor how you're feeling at this point. We're gonna add a little bit of goddess variation. So I'm taking my feet um, wide, about as long as one as wide as one leg is long, and I've turned my feet out a little bit, and you can adjust the angle of your feet depending on what's happening in your hips. So now I'm gonna bend my knees, and just like before, thinking about sending my knees to point towards the second or third toe, but for me, that's really challenging, so I'm trying, <laughs> trying pretty hard to get them there. Um, so you can adjust the angle of the feet if you need to. Notice I'm fairly upright here, and we'll just move in and out of this pose a few times. So bend in the knees, Sinking down, straightening the legs. And this has its own challenge. And you're welcome to keep it just like this. If you'd like to add the arms for this classic goddess pose, the next time you bend those knees, let's add cactus arms. So we've got those elbows in line with the shoulders. We've got 90 degrees at the elbows. Palms could face out, palms could face in. Just kind of play with what feels comfortable in your body. And then as we straighten the legs, we're gonna float the arms down. And then as we come back into our goddess, we can float those arms back out. We're gonna find that deep expression, shrugging the shoulder blades together, open chest, and then releasing. Let's do maybe four or five more of these. This is kind of our last kind of big effort in these standing poses. We're gonna see if we can add some ease here, this nice fluid movement, knowing we don't need to go deep into this pose if we don't want to. We can just play. about that shrug of the shoulder blades together. I like to pretend I'm kind of reaching my elbows away from each other, creating space at the collarbones, space at the shoulders. So three more here.
Okay, maybe we want to hold this pose for three breaths. Last big effort here. Great, and then we will release. We can walk our feet back together. And shake out anything you need to shake out. And let's find our mountain pose one more time. Inhale, finding your fullest height. Exhale, soft shoulders. A few more like that. Growing tall with the inhale and soft with the exhale. Okay, so the rest of the practice will be completed lying on your back. So take your time getting there. Use a wall, use a chair, whatever you need to. And once you're lying on your back, um, you might want to gather what you need for final relaxation. We have just a few more minutes before that final relaxation pose. So, uh, once you're lying down, uh, let's start the way we started lying down last time where the feet were wide and the knees were bent and the arms were reaching comfortably overhead. And let's come back to that movement, both knees to one side. Let's say they fall to the, to the right. We're gonna stretch that left side, squeeze the left butt, let it peel off the mat. And then slowly release. And as the knees fall to the left, we're going to stretch the right side, squeeze the right butt a little bit, let it peel off the mat. And release. Let's do that once more either side. If the knees fall right, there's that stretch along the left side, squeeze of the left butt. And release. The knees fall to the left. Stretch through the right side, squeeze the right butt. And release. Wonderful. And let's walk the feet a little bit closer. Let's reach the arms down by our sides. And so the feet are about hip distance apart. We're going to walk the heels towards us. So remember when we were kneeling and we grabbed that beach ball and we leaned back to stretch our thighs? We're going to kind of explore that, but from a reclined position. Instead of grabbing a beach ball, we're going to keep the arms down by our sides, pressing the hands down into the mat. We also get to have the feet pushing down into the mat. We're going to start to draw the tailbone up towards the ceiling by pressing the low back down into the mat. And then start to peel your back off the mat as you lift your hips. Yeah, there's the lean back. There's that place where we stretch the thighs and squeeze our butt. We're going to press those arms down. And then slowly lower down. Think about starting at the top of the spine and vertebra by vertebra. Slowly coming down. Even pressing that low back down into the mat so the tailbone is still curled up to the very end. And then we'll release. Let's do that a few more times. Draw the tailbone up, push through the hands and feet. Can we even try to find that thigh stretch as we squeeze our butt, lifting a little higher. And then slowly back down with control, almost like your hip bones are drawing towards your lower ribs as you imprint the low back. And then release. All right, a couple more times. Push through the hands and the feet, slowly lift off. And slowly lower down. One more to go. Pressing through the hands and the feet, lifting up. down. Wonderful. And once you're at the bottom of this pose again, 
Let's lift one foot and then the other. Hold on to those knees. And we'll rock from side to side. We can circle both knees together, getting a little massage happening around the sacrum and low back. Both knees circling together and then changing the direction. Wonderful. So we will now hold on to the right knee and reach the left leg up towards the ceiling. It's okay if that knee doesn't want to straighten. We're gonna point and flex the foot a few times just to say hello to your glorious feet again to give that leg a little bit of upside down time. And then maybe circling from the ankle. And changing the direction of that circle. Great, now we're going to flex the foot a little bit, so we're kind of reaching through the heel. We're going to actively pull those knees in towards the belly, and that right knee is trying to escape a little bit. It's pushing into those pulling hands. We're going to keep flexing that left foot like you're reaching through the heel. Keep reaching through that heel until you've lowered your leg just so it hovers over the mat. It's just hovering or it's lowered down. You get to choose, so maybe there's a hover here. I'm going to keep pulling the right knee to the belly as we take a slow breath in. And maybe with the exhale, we can lift the forehead towards the bent knee using our arm muscles. One more breath here. And then we can slowly release. You can release that left leg, release the head, neck, and shoulders. We're actually going to take our hands off that right knee. Point the right kneecap towards the ceiling. And then bring that right knee over to the left. So I'm going to rock onto the left hip. And this might be the place you want to stay. You could reach that right arm away from you. You could bring your left hand to the outer right thigh. I'm going to use that as a bit of traction. Now some of us are going to feel some discomfort in the low back. So only going as far as is comfortable here. But you could also scooch your left hip to the right a little bit. And sometimes that helps you go a little further. Um, really listening here. For some of us, twists are really subtle. For some of us, we got to move into it slow and gentle. So let's offer about three breaths. You're going to feel some compression to the abdomen here. So these breaths, just notice. You can still send them soft and deep. And soft and slow exhale. One more. Okay, so let's use that left hand to guide the right leg back over. And if you need to adjust the hips, feel free. We're going to meet with those knees towards the belly again, rocking from side to side. If you need to circle the knees a little bit or move in a different way, please do. Uh, now we're going to hold on to the left knee and reach the right leg up. And again, it's okay if the knee doesn't want to straighten. We are going to point and flex the foot a few times, give that leg some upside down time. And then begin to circle from the ankle. And maybe changing direction, just noticing how that feels at this point in the practice. Now let's flex the foot. So we're really reaching through the heel, drawing the toes towards us. And now we're actively pulling that left knee to the belly, but the left knee is trying to escape. So the arms are active. Right heel leading the way as you lower that long leg to hover over the mat. And you can lower the leg entirely or even bend it and put the foot down. You get to choose. Slow breath here. And as we exhale, lift the forehead towards the bent knee with the strength of your arms. Keep reaching through that long leg. One more breath in. And then we can release the right leg, release the head, neck, and shoulders. Let's release the left knee, point the kneecap towards the ceiling. And then 
guide the left leg across the body with that right hand rocking onto the right hip. So again, this is where you can keep the hand on the thigh. You might need to scooch the right hip to the left a smidgen. You might need to support under the leg or over the leg. As we reach the left arm away, maybe you look towards that left arm. Let's invite four or five soft, deep belly breaths here. relaxation breath pattern. One more. And then when you're ready, you're going to slowly guide that leg back to center. Adjust the hips. And maybe we hug the knees in. Or maybe we take the feet wide and rock the knees here. Just whatever feels right here. Maybe there's another pose or stretch or movement you wish to explore. When you're ready for final relaxation, make yourself comfortable. Again, you could return to that bent knee, toes turned in, rest knees against each other, arms out to the sides or to the belly. Might be more of a long bodied pose, pillow under the knees or under the head blanket over the body. You can press pause. You're in luck. Get what you need. And once you're comfortable, perhaps close your eyes and then continue to make any adjustments to increase your comfort. Sometimes with your eyes closed, it's easier to notice those little bits of discomfort. Beginning to breathe through your nose if you can. Tuning in to the rhythm of your own breath. A soft, deep in breath. A softer, slower out breath. Let's imagine that the breath has an invitation for us. And with each in-breath, we are being invited to kind of expand our awareness throughout our whole body. And with each out-breath, being invited to relax our whole body. So with the in-breath, just reaching your awareness out to your toe tips, your fingertips, the crown of your head, and everything in between. And with the out-breath, settling your body a little more fully onto that soft support beneath you. Each in-breath, we expand our awareness. 
reach out breath, we surrender our whole body to gravity and the soft support beneath. So for the next couple minutes or so, stay with the invitation of the breath to expand awareness and deepen surrender. If your mind begins to wander, that's okay. But perhaps come back to the invitation of the breath for a minute more. Expanding your awareness. Deepening your surrender. If you feel a deep need to rest for a little while longer, please feel free. If you would like to bring a hand to the belly and a hand to the chest, please feel free. Again, let's offer ourselves some sweetness here, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation, just for you. And then perhaps releasing your hands. So this is where I'll leave you. When you are ready to get moving, wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes, turn your head slowly. Maybe you'll stretch, maybe you'll...